Alright guys, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how I closed over $10 million in real estate in 2020 at the age of 23. So for all you struggling real estate agents out there, then hopefully this video helps you out. I sell really large mobile home parks. I mentioned it a bunch of times in my other videos. Basically, it's similar to multifamily, it's commercial real estate, whatever. We do it nationwide. A few things just to run through. Closed four deals, which totaled about $10 million, $235,000. do not have the exact name of the parks up here for confidentiality reasons. In one of these videos, I'm going to run through the packages and mention like the actual specifics behind the deals, the underwriting and all that. But first, close an 87 lot mobile home park in North Carolina. That was 4.85 million, 141 lot mobile home park in Missouri for 3.2 million, 162 lot mobile home park in Ohio. That was more of a value add fixer upper kind of deal, 685,000 and 144 lots in Northern North Carolina for 1.5 million. Some specifics behind the deal. Most of this transaction volume actually happened in the second half of the year because the first half we kind of got put on hold from the COVID. Transactions were still happening, but in the beginning of the lockdowns, everyone kind of held back and like everything was on hold just to see what was going to happen in the market. So let's talk about the first deal, the 87 lot mobile home park in North Carolina. That was in a major metro. A little bit of a complicated deal because the seller of that one actually didn't want to work with a broker. Instead of working with him, he said he'll talk directly to whoever our buyer is. Commercial works a little bit different than residential that you kind of have set buyers for these off-market deals that'll pay you commission instead of the seller paying it or you just work it. Like it's very wide open how you work it. In this case, we ended up taking this deal and with our buyer, he agreed to pay us a certain commission in exchange for the guy's phone number. We helped him with the contracts, underwriting stuff, but really it was kind of as simple as pick up the phone, find out this guy wants to sell, give the phone number to our buyer that we've done deals with as a team and we got paid our commission four months later. So that was how I closed the first one. Now the second deal, the 141 lot park in Missouri, the seller net also didn't want to work with a broker. So we got him a few offers. Eventually he ended up deciding to list with us we didn't actually ever bring it to market. The few guys that we had engaged before we had it as a listing actually just ended up being in a bidding war and we got above the asking price that we were gonna bring it out. We were gonna bring this out at 3 million, we ended up getting 3.2 million for it. Obviously through due diligence, this was a cash deal. It worked, it was one of our top buyers. Third, 162 lot mobile home park. This one was a listing. It was a rough park. It was less than 25% occupied. A lot of homes to be demolished, a lot of new homes need to be brought in. A little bit of a rougher market. We eventually got that sold, 685,000. And then last is the 144 lot mobile home park in North Carolina. That one was kind of in the middle of nowhere, but this one, again, wasn't a listing. It was an off-market deal. All I did was get verbal financials from the seller, put it in a quick underwriting, and sent it to one of our guys who we knew was a buyer in that market. He ended up agreeing to pay us our commission, put it under contract. That was a long contract process, but eventually got it sold. So yeah, that's total transactions. Now let's talk about how I got these clients. All of these deals, came from straight cold calling. The big thing that surprised me was that it's way less complicated than you think to get large clients. It's as, literally as simple as you either call them or meet them and ask. Everyone always thinks like I gotta do marketing, I gotta have experience, work my way up to these deals. What I found out was if you literally just call the person and ask if they'll work with you, 99% of the time they're gonna say no, but 1% of the time they say yeah, then you get a really big client. So the biggest thing is that you have a way to research these properties, okay? You need to know what properties you're gonna go for, specific markets I wanna focus on. There's specific property types, in my case, mobile home parks and your major MSAs usually. Some of these are a little more rural, but whatever. All I do is research who the owner is, find out through public records. We pay for a few programs, we're gonna talk about that in other videos, but figure out who the owner is, find their phone number, call them, see if they wanna sell. It's very simple, you just ask, do you wanna sell? Or sometimes you say, like, have you thought about selling? Would you look at an offer? Some sellers aren't sure about selling right now, but you show them an offer and then they're like, oh, okay, if my park is like in that ballpark, I definitely am a seller. So figure out if they wanna sell, find a way to get the financials from them. The financials is your key to underwriting it. Once you underwrite it, you're gonna try and convert them to someone to list it with you, or right now the transactions are moving so quick that most of this stuff just goes off market. We make two or three phone calls and it's under contract. So we have our key buyers. This is what helps with being on a team. Um, other street advisors, we have an established database with guys that we know are mobile home park players. Another way you can get around that is just by calling other mobile home park owners and researching who like the players in your market are. So clearly you'll see like, one specific company owns seven mobile home parks in North Carolina. We'll figure out who the owner of that is, get in touch with them and let them know like, hey, I'm hunting for deals in your market. What are you looking for? Once I find a property to sell, either I'll have something written up where the buyer agrees to pay a commission or the seller say he'll pay a commission. In some of these cases, they're saying like anything you get over this number, I'll pay your commission. 
works out. Everything's confidential. I match them with the buyer, then it goes under contract. Once it's under contract, it's a little complicated because there's a specific timeline. Attorneys love to get really involved. Things can go wrong, such as financials don't line up, bank financing doesn't get approved at the right terms. I'm gonna make videos breaking down all of the actual steps to getting these things sold. You find a seller, match them with the buyer, get it under contract, you manage that contract until you get to the closing, but it really just takes the skill that you really know your niche that you're focusing on. In my case, mobile home parks, you understand how to underwrite it, what the buyers are looking for, know how to maximize the seller's value. Like in this case, we knew so many buyers in this market that were good buyers, so we were able to create a bidding war and we got them above asking price. Tomorrow's video, I'm gonna be talking about the lead generation side of how you get these clients a little more in depth. Uh, biggest takeaway from this video, if you're any type of real estate agent or broker, no matter what type of properties you focus on, I don't care if it's like fancy mansions or if it's my case, mobile home parks or apartment buildings or retail centers, you need to find out who the owners are in your market and literally just ask them, hey, would you work with me? Figure out if they want to sell. Let them know who you are. Some people can pay money and do advertisements, send out mail outs, all that stuff. Or you could literally just call them and say, hey, would you like to sell? As easy as that. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars.